you know, I feel like we don't talk a lot with me making videos and whatnot, so I figured we should change that. And there's no time like the present. So today, let's talk about Anthem, the new co-op looter shooter that's coming to systems February 22nd. BioWare and EA have teamed up to gleam all the good parts from the Mass Effect and Titanfall series to make this quote-unquote original open-world adventure based around saving your home from whatever evils that may avail it. Look, the story's a BioWare thing, honestly, so it'll probably have some great moments based on the history. All of the Mass Effects have had great moments, and Titanfall 2's campaign is one of the best campaigns you've never played, although that's technically Respawn, not BioWare. I just wanted to tell you to play Titanfall 2's campaign. You're gonna hear me say that a lot, so yeah. EA is putting their whole house on this one though. They can't afford any missteps thanks to Battlefield losing steam and Mass Effect Andromeda being as humanly average as possible. With that, Anthem is seeming to be the breakout game we wanted Destiny 2 to shape up to be, to the point where I'm making a first impressions video. It's weird, right? But I've put about eight to 10 hours into the VIP demo, so I could, I could weigh in on this. And I did get to spend time with all four, although my favorite was the Interceptor Javelin, a nimble suit based on mobility and hand-to-hand -hand combat. I did get to play with the Storm, which is the overpowered glass cannon that will make the game easier for you as long as somebody in your crew is running with it. The Ranger, which is like the Ryu of the series, kind of balanced in every way. And the Colossus, which is the D.Va Overwatch inspired mech that in the right hands can make combos happen for your squad without even trying. So let's talk about it. Here's five things I took away from my playtime with Anthem. Try to blame it. I don't I don't know what I'm doing. You're gonna hear that there's a learning curve for piloting your javelins, and that's right. You're also gonna hear it's difficult to learn, and that's not quite true. That strictly depends on your ability to use both analog sticks to fly. That is easily the most important aspect of traversal that you're gonna need to get comfortable with immediately. That being said though, it took me a couple of minutes to get to basics, took about an hour of me experimenting while fighting to become natural and feeling like the little gray details. Little things like, can I dodge and then resume flying? Can I jump, dodge, double jump, then hover? See, my brain's weird, so. Can I use my ultimate while flying at full speed? And for the record, outside of the last question, the answer's yes. Unless you're a ranger, then it's just all yeses, see, balanced. But details aside, the fun factor needs to be there to even get into the weeds of the details. And it is, without a doubt, one of the coolest things I've done in a video game in the past couple years. Just for the sake of continuity, here's a super quick tier list that I threw together off the top of my brain so you can kind of know the type of things that I enjoy in video games. Yeah? Okay. I feel like we're learning about each other. This is good. Flying is fun. Managing your suit so you don't overheat is a nice little mini game in itself, but it makes sense. Flying downward along streams, the waterfalls, all of that cools the suit and makes it so you can stay in the air longer. But the moment where it clicked for me is when I had the first transition from flight to swimming. And that was quite possibly one of the perfect moments that, honestly, you might just have to just experience it for yourself. Oh! 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 Oh, that's crazy! Oh, we are swimming. We are 100% going under here. Ripping enemies to shreds, I mean combat, combat, won't feel foreign if you played Division or Mass Effect, actually. It feels like a hybrid carryover with combos coming straight from the Mass Effect series, so think like bionic combos. And the overshield health aspect feeling like elites from Division. Even with that being stated, there's way more customization here than I originally thought. See, each javelin has specialized ultimates, of course, but they also have additional powers with cooldowns that you can spec out further to fit whatever it is you want to do. And all of that, there's an extra layer of synergy you can tap into if you're about that life. Having moves you can combo off can generate power-ups, higher scores, and ultimate energy quicker, not to mention give you additional perks you can use to sow even more chaos. I had a pretty fun, self-sufficient combo where I'd freeze my enemies, then I'd use my melee attack, which would give me an icy aura that slowed down enemies as I got close. That's just a small sample of what you can do, and it gets even wilder when you're playing with a full squad that's just as devious. Lucky for me, all my friends are trash like I am, and petty, and committed to video game murder, so you know, it all worked out, so no biggie. We're coming back to that whole co-op angle, but since we're on customization, it's only right to dive a bit deeper here first. Cosmetic customizations are pretty much up to your imagination. You can change the color of almost everything on your javelin, then save it as a loadout to do it again. If you're like me, this may be where a lot of time is spent waiting for friends to finish eating food like, I don't know, turkey burgers or, I don't know, just thinking off the top of my brain, tomato, basil, wheat thins. I don't know what your friends do, I just only speak for myself. As hinted on earlier, you can also swap out your extra powers and items on javelin slots. Now, if you like to focus fire on one enemy at a time, you can throw on a tracking missile. If you like doing damage to groups, 
Try frag grenade or get saucy, put on venom spray, which poisons everyone in the immediate area in front of you. There's a chance to rap or acid rap joke there for you, but I guess I'll put that in a different video. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Look, you need friends. This isn't even about the game. It's just a good idea to have friends just in case you need someone to look out for you. Now, concerning the game, you need friends just in case one day you need someone to look out for you. Look, I feel like I just said that, but hear me out. The game has a co-op focus that permeates its entire being. That's not me being fake, deep, facetious, hotepish, nothing like that. Not only are there obvious benefits such as synergy, extra damage, and firepower, but you also get far more experience together than you do alone. And if you don't have friends for this game, you're going to be at a systematic disadvantage. There is a real life minority tie in here that I want to make so bad, I'm just not. But I will tell you the good news is that there's bound to be other people that's at a systematic disadvantage looking for consistent teams as well. So it's not a bad idea to party up every once in a while and just see what's up. Worst case scenario, you get partied with a jerk and you can just bloop, leave the party. It's not as daunting as you're making it, I promise. Just be social, it's like the point of the game. And lastly, I mentioned that I spent close to 10 hours playing this game in the VIP demo, but that's more like six since the other four, I got to look at this living picture for quite some time. Here, have a look. It's great, right? I'm gonna drink some juice while it's slowly just going for a moment. I just shout out to Clover Valley, you know. Ah, that's good cranberry. White cranberry strawberry. Yeah. Oh, yeah, sorry. There's a difference between a beta and a demo to me. A demo is a snapshot of the game that's pretty much polished and ready to go. PlayStation used to send out demo discs with Tony Hawk Pro Skater and Crash Bandicoot, which sampled the first few stages of the product. A beta is a game that's admittedly still in development but needs to work out heavy bugs, stress test servers, other assorted issues. The Division 2 has been hosting closed betas to get people to point out issues for them to fix, which is cool. Anthem's demo was a beta, which is fine if it was actually called an Anthem beta, but it wasn't. So when people pre-ordered the game expecting to function and see what they're getting into, and they weren't able to, that's a bad look. The first VIP demo, outside of the last hour the servers were up, was broken on Xbox One. You have to force quit the game and reopen it just to possibly drop into missions. You get an infinite loading screens that get to 92% and just stop. You get your progress reset for no reason. You get party invites that didn't work. You got official Twitter responses saying it was the consumer's fault for a broken game not operating completely. Then got those same Twitter officials coming back 24 hours later saying servers were at capacity. But how is that even the case when EA and Bioware were the one controlling the gates by giving out access codes, so to speak? Look, it was a complete mess of a quote unquote demo. And quite honestly, if the game wasn't so freaking good, there's no way my friends and I would have dealt with it all weekend. But that's the crazy part about Anthem. Even with the issues, the gameplay we got to experience overpowered the horrible servers and game breaking bugs. Anthem was that much fun. Look, traversal's fun. Combat is super rewarding. Customization is deep. The co-op aspect is ridiculously layered. And honestly, I'm looking forward to showing off more of the game. Soon as it works. And the king again, straight off the throne I am. Slapping a rapper with bars to turn them to holograms. Serial killer on instrumentals, you comprehend while giving fresh air when killing. I'm a Katana fan. Still methodical with the cuts like I'm Son of Sam.